as promised, my exclusive interview with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. He is a military man who generally keeps a very low profile, but this, this is a time that has thrust him really onto center stage, traveling from city to city in Europe to rally opposition to Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine. And we got some very special access throughout the Secretary's day today. I was able to speak with him on the plane while en route to Bulgaria. So good to see you. So it, it, he's showing up morale and defenses in Eastern Europe. And we were there as he welcomed. Uh, he was welcomed at Novo Selo training area in Bulgaria. Now here's our interview. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. And thank you. We just flew to Bulgaria from Slovakia where yesterday you reiterated your opposition to a no-fly zone. If that is a commitment of the United States, how do you help close the skies over Ukraine? Well, Don, I, 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 the president's been very clear about the fact that we won't uh, have troops engaged in combat uh, with Russia in Ukraine. Uh, in order to uh, affect or put into place a no-fly zone, uh, that we'd have to control the skies, and that would mean that uh, we'd have to engage Russian aircraft. We'd also have to take out uh, Russian anti-aircraft anti systems uh, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, in Belarus and also in Russia. So that would mean that we're uh, in, in combat with Russia. Uh, and these are two nuclear-powered countries uh, that, uh, that uh, you know, nobody wants to see uh, engaged in a conflict. It's not good for the region. It's not good for the world. Is the most important position right now for the U.S. is not to engage directly with Russia? Is that the most important position right now? Don, the most important thing is to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support Ukraine in its effort to defend its country and protect its sovereignty. Uh, and they've been doing, as we've all been inspired by the, their courage, uh, their tenacity, uh, their agility. Uh, and, uh, and so that's what we've been focused on. Also, we, we're focused on making sure that we, we do everything to, uh, uh, to protect NATO. And, uh, and so, You've seen us uh, rapidly deploy forces to the to, to the eastern uh, the, the countries on the eastern edge there, the eastern flank, uh, and uh, and you've seen us reassure our allies. You, the president's been very clear about uh, about the fact that uh, we will we are committed to Article Five, uh, and uh, we're going to do, uh, do everything uh, within our power to defend every inch of NATO territory. When you talk about, you know, not getting involved, R Russian missiles hit Lviv, 43 miles from uh, Poland's border. Do you continue to believe that it's possible to, to engage in this without direct involvement, NATO's direct involvement, which would mean U.S. involvement? Uh, again, Don, you know, our focus is making sure that uh, we do everything we can to support, uh, support Ukraine. And I, don't, I certainly don't want to get in, uh, involved in any or hypotheticals. I don't think that's healthy, but I think uh, we've been clear about, you know, what we're focused on here. So. The, the U.S. has made it very clear that they don't want to, um, to, to be involved in the process of giving jets to Ukraine. Now, do you support other countries uh, doing it or either encourage, or either encourage other countries to do it as long as there's no U.S. involvement? Uh, Don, what, uh, what other countries do, I mean, that's, that's their, their choice, and the United States certainly does not stand in the way of uh, other countries providing assistance. Uh, but again, we're going to remain focused on those things that, that we know are making a difference. And what's making a difference uh, in this fight uh, for the Ukrainians is uh, the provision of uh, anti-aircraft systems, uh, the, the provision of, uh, of armored, uh, uh, anti-armored systems, and also uh, things that, other things that have been effective are you know, the, the employment of drones. And so uh, you've heard, uh, heard the president uh, say most recently uh, what, we're, what we're doing, the kinds of things we're providing. Uh, he just, uh, we just signed, uh, uh, just provided authorization for us to provide an additional billion dollars billion worth dollars. of uh, security force assistance. That's remarkable. What is your assessment of, of Russian forces now? Are they stalled? Are they regrouping? so that they can increase uh, their assault or increase their violence on Ukraine? What's your assessment of the Russian military? Well, it's hard to tell, Don. I think, uh, you know, they, they have not progressed as, far, as quickly as they would have liked to. 
Uh, they, I think they envisioned that they would move rapidly and very quickly uh, seize uh, uh, the capital city. They've not been able to do that. Uh, they've struggled with uh, uh, logistics. So we've seen a number of missteps uh, along the way. I don't see uh, um, you know, evidence of good employment of uh, tactical uh, intelligence. I don't see integration of uh, uh, you know, uh, air capability with the ground, uh, ground maneuver. And so there are a number of things that we would expect to have seen that, that we just haven't seen. And the Russians really have had some, that's presented them some problems. So many of their assumptions uh, have, not, uh, have not proven to be true as they, as they entered this fight. Uh, so. Uh, the president is speaking uh, with Xi Jinping, um, and it, it, we are getting reporting that, that, that Russia has been asking China uh, for drones and for help. What happens, do you think China will stay out of this, and what happens if they don't? Well, again, uh, don't want to speculate or get invo involved in hypotheticals. Uh, I, would, uh, I would hope that China would, uh, would not support this uh, uh, despicable act by, uh, by Putin. I would hope that uh, uh, they, would, uh, they would recognize uh, you know, a need to, uh, to respect sovereign territory. And, uh, and so uh, hard to say what, what they will do. but. Uh, you know, we, we've been clear that if, if, if they do that, we, you know, we think that's a bad choice. So. Putin has raised the specter of possible use of nuclear weapons. I want, I want to first ask you about chemical weapons. Uh, we're getting intelligence, or we, we're hearing from intelligence people saying uh, that Russia uh, may use chemical weapons and then blame Ukraine, falsely blame Ukraine. The president has said if that happens, they're going to pay a heavy price. What is a heavy price? Well, you know, I, uh, again, uh, don't want to speculate about uh, whether or not, uh, you know, what, what, what the price would be. I would just say that if he used chemical weapons, uh, there would be, uh, you know, a negative reaction from the international community, Don, and in terms of, you know, uh, what kind of uh, responses that would, uh, that would, uh, um, uh, would come about as a result of that from the international community, left to be seen. But... Uh, uh, again, we we certainly would hope that he would choose not to do that. You know, Putin could could end this today. He's had a number of choices, a, a number of opportunities along the way uh, to uh, to de-escalate and to off-ramp, uh, and he's not done that. And so we are here today because of the uh, the uh, choice of one man. And uh, you know, he he's certainly got options right now. And one of those options is to de-escalate and to. Uh, and, and to seek a diplomatic uh, uh, solution to this. What about tactical? What about the use of tactical nuclear weapons? That is a concern that he may use with so-called small nukes. Are you concerned about that? Well, you know, I, again, uh, the use of a nuclear weapon is uh, is a thing that nobody wants to see. Uh, I think uh, I think you know any kind of excessive rhetoric about uh, nuclear weapons and the employment of nuclear weapons is is not helpful. Uh, but I would tell you that, uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, we're confident uh, in, our, in our current uh, stance and, uh, and our capabilities and our, our ability to defend ourselves. Is the U.S. Uh, giving tactical advice or any kind of advice? Are there any U.S. forces helping um, the Ukrainian military? Don, what you see us doing is providing a, a, a lot of security force assistance in terms of, uh, of uh, equipment. Uh, we're talking to our counterparts every day, you know, and uh, and hopefully I'll get a chance to talk to uh, uh, to, to the Ukrainian Minister of Defense uh, soon. But but there's a, there's always there's a constant dialogue uh, ongoing between us and their leadership, and also uh, the leadership of other countries as well. As I talk to my my uh, colleagues, other ministers of defense, uh, they are engaging. Uh, uh, the Ukrainian Minister of Defense on a daily basis. What about special forces? Are, are they helping the, the um, Ukrainian military? Are they in Ukraine at all helping? Uh, we, we, we don't have any forces in, in, in Ukraine. No. It has been noted in the book Art of War, Sun Tzu says that what you should do, you should build a bridge for your opponent, a golden bridge to retreat across. What is Putin's golden bridge? How do you see this ending? Well, we, we see this ending by he, well, we're here because of, the, of, of his decision uh, to, uh, to, to launch this attack. Uh, he can make a decision today to end this uh, and seek a diplomatic solution.
Uh, he's had a number of opportunities along the way. He has opportunities today uh, to decide to do something different. This is not going well for him on the battlefield, and uh, and there are a number of things that are now uh, coming into play that will make things more difficult uh, for him as he goes further. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Secretary. I appreciate it. Thank you.